Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Those who have been sticking around me know that I'm currently an art student studying character animation at CalArts, and every year students are encouraged to make their own films. For freshmen BFA 1s, there were a few requirements the school wanted us to have, which I think in a way helps us, especially people who have never made films before, to really focus on actually creating and finishing a final product. I released my first year color arts film, Rush Hour, that you can check out on YouTube. The link will be in the description. So in today's video, I just wanted to show you all my process for making my first ever short film, as well as a little journal for Veda as she looks back on her filmmaking journey in the future. And if you haven't already, please watch my film! I worked really, really hard on it! It's only 90 seconds long, but I don't want to spoil anything, so come back after you've watched it. The animation pipeline, in short, is the system, basically the whole process of starting to finishing a film. Although this process varies depending from studio to studio, animator to animator, this video will personally be about my Sakura Ovo's workflow for completing my film. So let's get started. Getting an idea is hard, and a eureka moment may come really unexpectedly for some, while others is when they are actively searching for inspiration. For me, I kind of daydream, or I guess nightdream while I lay in bed trying to fall asleep every night. For me, that is how I got most of my ideas, just letting the subconsciousness of my body be engulfed and drowned in thoughts. So after one sleepless night, I remember something I always thought about as a kid. What if I fell into the gap of the MTR, which is the subway system in Hong Kong? Now, having this idea in mind, it was time to think about a story that could play around with this question while fitting into the 1 minute 30 time requirement my school wanted us to have. This 90 second requirement really changed a lot of things because frankly, it isn't a lot of time at all. So I knew from the get go, I had to think about a short, sweet, simple story with a guy falling into the MTR platform and hopefully bring some sort of meaning to my audience. I first started thumbnailing ideas, pitching to everyone I could get my hands on, from friends, families, to teachers, especially the mentor that we get assigned here at CalArts, he really really helped my film get to what my film is today. There were a few variations that my story went through, but they weren't very significant changes because I had a quite firm story and message I wanted to convey from the start. The previous versions, my little tired guy, which is what I'm going to call him, instead of waking up after drowning, he follows the fish to a playground of some sort where he reminisces of childhood and gets reminded of the liveliness and comfort that life can bring. After many pitches, changes, and me thinking, I finally came up with a version that I was satisfied with, which turned into what came to be. So I made a whole thing into an animatic. Yes, an actual animatic. Really reminiscent of my early days on YouTube. Shout out to my homies who watched all my Hanako Miraculous Ladybug and other fat animatics I did as a kid. Yeah. On to the next part. Honestly, I did not know what visual development was until I got into CalArts. I did not know a lot of things before coming here, but you know, we live and we learn. So don't be ashamed if you don't know anything and you're about to go to art school because that was me, okay? So it's okay. Anyways, visual development is basically people who develop the look or aesthetic of a film. And you usually achieve this through concept art, character design, prop design, color scripts, etc, etc. Just really building the visual of the world you want to create. So I started looking around on Pinterest for artworks that I really admired that could inspire what my first year colors film could look like. As I said before in a very old but popular video of mine, having an art inspiration board really really helps. And then afterwards, I started drawing one or two stills from my storyboards on Procreate, really thinking on what I wanted my final product to look like. For this film specifically, since I'm a colored person, yet this film I'll be making will be in black and white due to the school's requirement, I decided to introduce screen tones and shapes to add that visual interest. 
I also knew that for this film, I didn't want to have really rendered and detailed backgrounds, but instead animated, line boil, sort of scribbly style, if you would call it that, as there would be a lot of moving crowds in the MTR, and scribbly line art style is just very Veda Sakura folklore, I feel. Now that I have my story and visual development kind of set, it was time to make a schedule which I could stick with for the rest of the school year so I can actually finish my film. I don't know how much you can tell based on my videos, but I love keeping things hyper-organized and that's just how I've functioned in the last few years, especially during IB. So in true Saku fashion, I made a very detailed spreadsheet on what I needed to do specifically on each week and I try my best to follow it. Now that I knew what my visuals and story were going to be for the film, the next step was to actually make the film. In ColorArts, we learned how to use the program TV Paint to animate, so I mainly used that to make my film as well. So if you've watched Rush Hour, you may have realized that there were two main settings, the MTR station and the ocean slash fantasy world. To achieve a bigger contrast between the two worlds, I also wanted to change up the drawings per frame for different animation fluidity. So what do I mean by drawings per frame? If you don't know, the standard frame rate of a video is 24 frames per second. Now drawing per frame means that every number of frames there is a new drawing. If you animate it on twos, aka a new drawing every two frames, you achieve a smoother animation, which is typically what you see in Disney's classical 2D stuff, compared to animating on fours, which you typically see more in Japanese anime, which is understandable because it's way less work. For my film, to create the change in animation fluidity between the two worlds, I wanted all my shots in the MTR station to be on fours for that stiffer animation fluidity, whereas all the ocean shots will be animated on twos, so it'll be very smooth and ocean-like. Then, based on my animatic, I would animate each shot, making sure that the timing is right and all that jazz. I'm also actually quite an avid user of animation timing charts, which you can see here. Basically, it just helps me know how many in-between frames I have from key pose to key pose and what the spacing will be from each frame. Typically, I do key poses and breakdowns, which are just the main poses of a character, to the rough animation and then It'll be clean animation, and then I'll add the secondary overlapping animation, and then I'll add the background, and then color, and then finally shading. Repeat this for 28 shots, and there, everything now is fully animated! Yay! Wait, 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 we're not done yet because now it is time for effects and compositing. Yippee! I actually very much enjoy this part. For more complicated compositing, people usually use the program Adobe After Effects. However, for my film specifically, I didn't really have any super complicated compositing I needed to do, so I just stuck with my handy dandy Final Cut Pro X, as that is the program I've been using now for like. Oh my god, seven years to edit my YouTube videos. Although the edits seem small, I feel like they add a whole lot to my animation, most notably being the underwater effect to achieve that handheld camera floating feeling, especially when the main character starts to drown, and of course, the function keyframe to move things around. I also added a focus blur, a vignette, and some textures to make my film look more visually pleasing as well. Before the idea was even fully developed, I knew that I wanted to make the music for my own film. If you stuck around my channel long enough, you can find the occasional sucker produced music singing covers and piano covers on my channel because I truly, truly, really, really, really like music. And maybe if I didn't pursue animation, I'd be doing something in the field of music. Um, 
Anyways, since my film is set in the MTR station, the first thing I had to do is record the ambient noise of an MTR station. So when I was back home during winter break, I literally just went to the subway, held my phone high up against the speakers of the train, and just used the audio from that video to create the sound of my film. Since I wanted the audience to focus more on the ambience of a train station rather than the music itself, I created my music around the audio I recorded. Additionally, I only chose to have a simple piano melody, kind of symbolizing the lack of music in the mundane life compared to later on with more ethereal, gentle music I have during the fish scene. I remember someone asked me how I produce my music, and I answered, it was just me playing around like how I would with digital art. Instead of testing out the brushes, I test out with every single instrument and producing music is like adding different layers of sound to make something complete, like how in digital painting, there are many layers to make an illustration look full. Wow, that sounds so deep. Plus, I just like playing the piano a lot, like a lot, a lot. So in a way, it was just me playing around while still being able to work on my film at the same time. Yay, productivity! So now, with all my fully animated, colored, and composited shots compiled together with music, I finally have my first year film in color. It's completed! Yay! Yippee! Slay! First and foremost, I would like to thank all of you so, so, so much for all the sweet comments on my film. It truly means a lot, and reading them really makes me feel that my hard work paid off. And I hope it got you thinking a little bit about life, too. Making this film truly was a learning experience because a year ago, I would not have had the capacity to write the script or even understand the content of this video at all. And I really get why our school pushes us to make a film every year because I felt that I not only got to know how to animate better, but I got to know myself as an artist and animator better as well. Thank you all for sticking around to the very end of this video and being with me on my art journey. And I've, I saw some comments like, oh, I've been sticking around for like two years, three years, and I know oh, you've improved so much. And every time yeah, I read those comments, it makes me like melt inside with like joy and wholesomeness. So I, I think I said thank you way too many times, but really thank you a lot. I really hope to make more films and animated projects for you guys in the future, as well as videos like this. And yeah, so see you in the next video. Uh, stick around because more exciting content will be coming especially over the summer when i have more time to make videos okay bye bye <laughs> let's go thank you